So what are comic book sales in comic book retail shops? I saw this online and I thought it was very telling of what the problem is in the comic book retail space, comic book shops. As you can see here in the image, it says that 36.5% is Marvel, 25.5% is DC. When you add those two together, that makes 59% of comic book retail shop sales being Marvel and DC. There's a lot of reasons why you can't trust this survey, but I think it kind of shows you the frame of mind that a lot of comic book shops have. They say, well, I have to sell Marvel DC because that's all it sells. That's what the whole market is based off of. But there's certain questions that they don't really talk about when they conducted this study, right? So to begin with, it's a sample of 100 comic book shops. All of them have to be part of the Comic Hub shop. If you don't know what Comic Hub is, let me show you real quick. So this is the Comic Hub app. Click that. Comic Hub, and basically this is where people like me find comic book shops that have comic books that we want and we can order them online or for pickup. And so that's what the app is. And so they kind of conducted this survey. I would have to ask how much percentage wise is it of the inventory? So that's one of the things that they don't talk about or factor in into this paper is this idea of like, well, what is your ratio of, of image comics versus Marvel comics? And what is that when you basically adjust for the comic book rate in the sense of like for every one image comic are you buying 10 Marvel or DC comics. The other thing that they don't talk about is how much of those sales are part of the pull list versus things that they're showing customers. That's a very different thing as well, right? Someone like me, I show up and I tell them, hey, I want this, I want that. I kind of know artists that I want, but then I peruse the comic book wall to see what there might be that I'm unaware of. So that's my other question of how much of this is that comic book retail shops aren't perpetuating the lie that it's Marvel and DC because they're carrying heavily Marvel and DC comics and they're pushing the Marvel and DC comics because that's their inventory. Now, if they didn't have a stake in this, like if you bought a thousand Marvel comics and a thousand DC comics and you bought 10 image comics and you had no stake in whether or not they sold, I would trust your judgment better. But the fact of the matter is that they buy this inventory, they have to sell this inventory. And so they create this this bubble themselves of like they have to sell Marvel and DC comics because they bought in nothing but Marvel and DC comics. And one of the things that they don't talk about for the comic book industry that my paper I had to include and I had to do research on is like physical copies versus digital copies. There's really no accurate way of talking about what the digital comic book sales are because something like Comixology doesn't share that information. So the other thing is not only that comic books and the way we understand them are changing, thus the market is changing, but it's also that some of it we're not able to account for. And so the papers that I was, that I was studying, that I was talking about, were showing an exponential growth in comic book sales and the money being made from them just off the books, right? We're not talking about shirts, video games, movies, and all that, but just off of the comic books. It was this idea that this is not even accounting the digital comics that are also being sold. Comic book sales in bookshops are viewed differently than comic book shops and that doesn't make any sense to me because a comic book is a comic book. The other thing that people don't talk about is like when they're talking about predominantly Marvel and DC comics are being sold, they're not talking about new issues versus old issues. Because someone like me, I don't currently possess a copy of uh, Frank Miller's Dark Knight. But even though that's a comic book that I read that really had a lasting impact on me, I've given my copy to somebody and one of those things of never got it back. How much of the Marvel and DC comic books that are being sold are contemporary uh, comic books versus the classics? I know I recently uh, purchased all the Alan Moore Swamp Thing books. So like there's, there's classic comics that people get, you know what I mean? Now that doesn't mean that that's Marvel and DC selling contemporary comic books that they're making. And I think that's one of the other aspects of like this kind of paper that it's missing. It doesn't tell you, are these the new comics, right? So like that kind of stuff is the shit that I'm talking about where like it creates a false narrative and a, and a false reality of what the comic book industry is. And so then the problem that you have with that is that people that are independently making comic books, in order to compete, they begin to feel like they need to lean that way or become more Marvel or more DC. Or comic book shops think, I have to sell Marvel and I have to sell DC because this is the bread and butter. But that's not the case, you guys. Like I said, carry the classics. Absolutely, man. Carry the, the classic uh, Frank Miller, Daredevil, and Dark Knight run. Carry the Alan Moore comics, right? Carry Watchmen, V for Vendetta. Absolutely. Carry the Ninja Turtles. Like, carry the classics, you know? Why wouldn't you? It makes sense. 
But on top of that, when you start looking at everything else, the other half of it is this other aspect that people told you wasn't shit. Now, I don't think that they're getting the marketing, the representation, or the stores pushing that content out, but they've grown nonetheless. I don't think comic book shops that do carry manga are like actively pushing the mangas out there, right? I don't think people that carry independent comics are actively pushing those independent artists out there. And that's what I'm talking about. When you view the fact that 41% of the market is this other that we talked about, right? Small press like IDW, uh, Dark Horse, Image, and things like that, as well as completely independent, right? Which is other, completely independent, and manga and all that. With Even without the marketing machine of Marvel and DC, they're still grabbing quite a bit of the market. So that tells me that if the market just understood that and adopted it a little more and gave it the kind of push and representation that they give to Marvel and DC, these other aspects of the comic book industry would make it so that these comic book retail shops actually turn a profit and just make things better for the comic book industry. Because when comic book retail shops sell comics, comic book creators actually are able to make more comics. That Marvel, DC, Diamond Distribution, and a lot of these comic book retail shops have created a really, really weird and strange industry that cannot sustain itself because the people that are stewards of this market don't care about genuinely what this product is. I'm really rooting for the comic book industry. I think comic books are getting stronger, they're getting better. I think that the diversification of it is great. Uh, like I said, there's more comic books being made now than ever and there's more money being made from comic book sales than ever. The difference is that now it's not so centralized. So whereas before it was only Marvel and DC that really sold comic books, now there's a whole bunch of independent creative minds selling the comics that they make, whether at home or other places like myself. And that's what's going on in my opinion is that the people are noticing that these two big establishments that predominantly provided a lot of big creators with their money, hence Mark Miller's uh, talk about how the industry is in the worst state it's ever been, right? That's why they feel that way because they've been under the umbrella of these big, giant, massive, centralized comic book entities. But as these entities die, all that's gonna do is free up the comic book market to become something new, something better. And that's what I'm rooting for. So please don't get you know, shoehorned or, or put in a box that Marvel and DC are the stewards of comic book and that's why they matter. Let them die, bro. If they can't get it together and understand that one, they've been treating creators really, really badly. Two, that they've been turning out really shit comics, thus treating the readers really badly. And three, that they've been giving comic book retail shops really shitty uh, business practices that really has made the comic book retail shops like a nickel and dime kind of business then they don't deserve to, to exist. Let them die. I don't understand why people are always so foaming at the mouth for these corporations. Fuck them. But that's all I got for you guys today, man. So go ahead, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the link in the show notes if you want to get an issue of Furrow Comics or get a year subscription. All right? Lates.